Good morning, brethren. Good morning. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For if it wasn't for him, there would be no reason for us to come together. That's right. We might as well be here with the rest of them. Without hope, looking for our inevitable destruction. That's all they have to look forward to. But you know what? We serve a good God who does not going to leave us yes. hopeless. That is not his desire. It's not his desire. Actually, you know, the world, what they do is they'll put weights on you. And all they'll do is keep you down until your destruction. That's what, I, that's what the world does. But see, what God does, he takes the weights off of you, yeah. gives you hope and joy, faith, looking for the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a difference that is, brethren. And this is our, in our text right here, this is where up to this point, the Spirit has been bringing us to this point where there's no hope. What hope do we have? So you, for a sense of spirit, you're, you're brought to this, up to this point here in Romans, you're brought to this point. What are we going to do? What can we do? What can we do? And you, if you're sensitive, you're, up to this point, you've been just felt helpless. And that's what the Spirit is doing purposely. It's showing that you can do nothing on your own. That without God, this is a hopeless situation. Satan, from the beginning, he, it, I looked at this and I was thinking about this when I was preparing. It's like a, it's a power grab that he's trying to do here. And he did it from the beginning. One third of the angels followed him. What? From, from heaven. One third of them. So he is a great deceiver. Obviously, he is a great deceiver. We have a, we're sitting here today witnessing this. We have brethren come together to, to proclaim the truth. Why are we not have a number bigger? Well, you know, I am thankful for live stream. We do have brethren all the way around the world. But I'm just saying, it's not the way it should be, brethren. This is not the way it should be. He is, a, he is a deceiver, a liar and a deceiver. He, he has deceived many. But see, we do not have to be deceived. We can see that what God is doing is good. It's good, it's good and it's, it will bring joy to our souls. We, you know, as the world crumbles around us, and you scratch your head and think, why? As some of the things that happen, why? You don't have to be overwhelmed by this. See, this is what faith does for you. It keeps you steady. Yeah. It, keeps you, it keeps you so you're not like the world. The world is up and down. One day they're doing good. Well, we don't have to go by one day. One minute they're doing good, the next minute they're just a mess. But faith, faith will be able to keep you steady through all, everything that happens. The state that we are in is so bad that we have no place to go but to God. We it's God's wisdom on display here. He's showing how he's going to work this out, how he is working it out. Some people are stronger than others when it comes to living moral. And don't get me wrong, we must live moral. Believers must live moral. But I'm, I'm saying, I'm pointing out here, we have, we have some who are stronger in some areas than others. Some are stronger and you know, we don't need to go into a discussion about this, but the point of this text here is that if we're going to stand before God, we need his righteousness. Yeah. We're, we're not going to be good enough. Now, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to have a discussion on how good, how good should we be. But you, you, you're, you should be as good as you can be morally. Perfection is the aim. You don't, you don't want to... Now, see, because some people, the flesh will always tend to say, well, see, you can't do it. Just, just do whatever you want. That's it, but that's flesh. Flesh is tied to the world, and it can't see this. We don't want to waste our time comparing ourselves amongst ourselves. But the point here that I see is preparing to stand before God. Yes. That's the point. And if, if that's our focus, if our focus is stand before God, because it's inevitable, you will stand before God. 
you can, you can get yourself so wrapped up in things and forget about that it's coming, but that doesn't change the fact that it's coming. We're not going to be here forever and ever and ever. As a matter of fact, today may be your last day. We don't know that. So preparation should be our main thing. Why is it not? Why is preparing for standing before God not the main thing? Because Satan is, is a great deceiver. Now we have all things working against us. We've got our flesh so it's working against us. But it, the overall thing is Satan is a deceiver, and he has done a well, a very good job of not making, helping people not to think about what is coming. And you can't stop it. When we're born, we're going to die, or the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. This is a fact that nobody can change. It doesn't matter how much they dispute it and how much they scream and kick and throw themselves on the floor. Jesus is coming back, or we're going to die and stand before God. So, being acceptable should be the main thing that we think about all the time. Amen. If a believer is really sober about this preparation, it will cause for a lot of shallow thinking to fall to the ground. A lot of shallow speaking, a lot of shallow talk, just things that really are not going to help us prepare. I'm talking about in a church. They talk about a lot of things that does not have anything to do with our preparation. So why do we even need to waste time talking about it? Well, we don't. Let's just get free of that right now. We don't need to talk about these things. Because what happens is when you're walking in the spirit, a lot of things are taken care of. It's because people are living in the flesh that we have to deal with some silly things. When you're walking in the spirit, a lot of things are taken care of. Too many believers are talking about Worldly issues, because standing before God, standing before the Almighty God, is not, that's not even on the radar. Forget about main or main objective, their aim. So what, my question is, what is important? If we're going to stand before God soon, what is the question here? What's, what's important here? That's a question. The question and the important thing to ask yourself is, Am I ready? If right now my last breath is in my lungs, am I ready to stand before God? So that will get rid of a lot of silly questions. That will bring you right to the forefront of what's important. Yes, we have responsibilities in the world, but they will not have the weight of top importance when you see clearly how close we are to stand before God. When you see that it's just coming. The date's already set. And nobody can stop it. Who can stop this coming date that God has already set? Nobody knows the date, but he set it. That's right. it's, it's not way off in some distance. It's coming. Can you successfully stand before God? When the things of the world have been your priority this whole time, I'm asking you, can you stand before God when you have not thought about God, when you have not given yourself to God, and when you have given yourself to the world, you're, I mean, only you can answer this. Yeah. Or we don't need people to point out people. You know yeah. how you spend your time. You know. Only you and God know how you give yourself. No one can stand on their own. The truth is, when we lay our head down at night, it may be that we're going to be waking up in glory and giving an account to God Almighty for exactly how we spent every minute of our life here. That may be a long time to you, our life, but it's just a vapor, the Bible says. It's only been a vapor, and now the vapor's gone, and now you're giving an account to God how you spent every minute of your life. Again, only you, could, only you could know that. Preparing right now to stand before him is top priority. Amen. God has made the impossible possible. Because we serve a good God. I'm telling you, brother, he's a good God. Amen. It's impossible to put your hope in the flesh and stand before God and live. It's impossible to rely on your own Morality and stand before God. 
It's impossible to have confidence in your mind, your intellect. It's impossible to put your trust in anything but God. And stand and live. I have always admired people that excel in certain areas, whether it be in the intellect, whether it be in strength, whether it be in working hard or whatever. But all these things, brother, and they're not gonna they're not gonna help you when you're standing before God. Impressive they may be to other men, to other men. But not when you're standing before God. You take the most intellectual person that men raise up and say, oh, look at how, how much he's done compared to other men. And it will not hold water when you're standing before God. But see, what we're looking at here in our text surpasses all that men are able to do. All the best of men are able to do. All transgression must be dealt with. It's when a law is set and broke, men have transgressed. So here's where we stand. Men cannot remove one transgression on his own. It's never been done, and I guarantee you, according to what I know from the scripture, it's not going to be done. But all transgression has to be made, it has to be taken care of. Sin has to be put away. This brings us to our text. But now, but now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. See, Amen. this is not, this is, see what he's saying here? This is, this is not like, Men react to things. This, is, this isn't a reaction God has. This is from the beginning. He has purposed this. He, he's putting his wisdom on display here. He, he's before, before he, anything has happened, he already, this isn't like something happens and men gets all, oh my goodness, we got to do something. We got to make up a new rule. See, men, men do this. It's called knee-jerk reaction. Situation comes up, and they just react to it. Well, God ain't like that. He's not like that. He doesn't react. He is a creator. It's a hopeless situation to us, but it's not hopeless to God. This, but now, is the most glorious thing to a believer that we will ever hear. But now. See, we came up to the scriptures at this point where we're just hopeless. We can't do anything about it. But now, on our own, we're hopeless. But now, if you allow yourself to be caught up in the world, you will lose and forget this but now. You'll lose it. This is our hope and our joy while we are in the fight. Because you're, you're either in the fight or you're not in the fight. So you've got two, two types of people. They're in or out. We don't have in between. You're either all in or you're all out. The fight is to continue to see what God is doing and to see Satan's tactics because he's a liar and deceiver and he's going to blind you. Oh, you're fine. No. See, he'll, he'll twist the scripture. Oh, God loves you just the way you are. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Just relax. Enjoy yourself. Hey, you only live once. That's it. Live once, and then you stand before God. Yeah. Well, he don't tell you the whole truth. He gives you the half truth. He, 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 he does tell you the truth, but up to a point, and then he cuts it off. Or he twists it. God, on the other hand, he doesn't do this. God is for his people. He is bringing us joy. He is bringing us satisfaction. He is bringing us glory. He is bringing us honor. All what Satan promises in this world is a lie. But what God promises is really going to happen. Eternal life is real. Standing before him is real. And preparing to stand before him and live is a real thing that we have to be prepared for. Amen. And God is preparing his people.
people. See, that's what the difference is. God is good. Yeah. Satan is a liar. That's right. All what Satan promises will come to naught. In Christ, God is bringing us to glory, to stand before him, to stand before God successfully. See, what Satan is doing, he's not bringing us to glory. He's, he's going to bring us down to hell where we'll stay. God will not overwhelm you and stress you out like flesh does. Flesh and men being led by flesh, this, this is why there's chaos. This is why people are... are when things come up, they just, they just crumble. See, faith doesn't do that. Faith keeps you steady and strong. Because we're not looking at the things around us, the things that are, are passing away. We're looking at what's, gonna be, what's stable. The world is not stable. We already know that. We see tornadoes, earthquakes. It's, the world is moaning and groaning, and, and it, nothing is stable. There's only one thing consistent about this world. It's inconsistent. Every time you turn around, something else is happening. You don't know what's going to happen next. You're ready for something to happen that you're not prepared for it to happen. But that's not how glory is. Yeah. Glory is being with our God for eternity is stability. And so that's what makes you stable. Is by faith, you're looking at where we're going. Yeah. Not what, what's around you. You don't get caught up in the things around you. God won't overwhelm you. If you are living in the flesh, you will be overwhelmed. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, John 3, 6. So we must be born again, John 3, 7. Flesh cannot help. This is why people are re relying on men and man-made organizations, even if they're called Christian, they can't help you. And you see People that are unstable, all over the map. It's because only God can help us. Only God can purge our conscience from dead works. Removal of sin and making our conscience pure is the only way we'll be able to be content and stable. And only God can do that. See, living in the world, it can't do that for you. Living close to God can We were not made to live in sin. And that's why true happiness, you know, the world talks about this all the time. We, we, got, we can help you. Just read our book. Buy our book. Buy our stuff. And we can help you with happiness. And in the end, they're not, they're not any better than you were before they read the book. True happiness will never come until we are totally without sin. Amen. And only God can help us do that. If we want our name written in heaven, it's God and only God that can help. The truth is, if you don't believe, if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter what men say. We have the scriptures laid out. You're, not, you're going to be helpless. This reality must Penetrate your heart. Penetrate your heart and mind. To be, you have to be able to see this clearly. And then when you are able to see it, you want to protect it. You want to give yourself to it. You don't want anything to take it away because the world will come and steal it away from you. There are consequences for being lazy with this truth Amen. and not holding on to it and not giving yourself to it. And giving yourself to the world. There is consequences. It doesn't matter what people say. You know, they come up with all these strange things like God loves you just the way you are. And then we read the scripture and say, well, why did he send Jesus for if he loved us just the way we are? Right. It doesn't make sense because flesh doesn't make sense. Flesh, flesh isn't coming with us to glory, brethren. It's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. It's connected to the world. So flesh will come up with all kinds of reasoning why it's okay with God. It sounds strange because flesh is so disconnected from God. It's, it's upside down. Everything is backwards. This is one effect 
of living in the flesh. It robs you of the ability to see what God is doing. God is our main attraction to the believers. And flesh will rob you of seeing that. See, we, we already see that in the world that we live in today. Things that should be 2 plus 2 equals 4. The, the world says, no, I want it to be 5. It doesn't matter what you want. That's not how God made it. Flesh will try to make systems that are hard to follow and are not helpful at all. Making life up, it should be up, will be down. Everything's turned around. That's the way flesh works. But see, God, this isn't the way God is. This does not have to do with, this is not the case with God. It is possible to walk in the spirit so that your, our lives can be stable and a blessing to others around us. Now, you know this to be true. Those who aren't stable, they, they affect all manner of people around them in a bad way. But those who are stable, they bless all those around them. Why is that? That's because God's working in their lives. And that's how God is. He's a, he blesses. See, the world get, has it backwards. Oh, God, he's hard taskmaster. No, he's not. He's a good God who blesses his people. Faith makes us stable. Flesh can appear for a while to be stable, but it will, in time, come apart, unravel. God is not reacting to a situation. What God has done is Amen. effective, mm -hmm. and it's available to all who believe, yeah. moving us from the condemned under the law to being accepted by God. Mm -hmm. Faith moves us to believe what God has said is true. We believe, that's what faith does. You have faith, it causes you to believe. This is, this is always... And it always has been the purpose of God. Men react to situations, but God does not. God is showing us. He's showing us this. This is his purpose that he has set in place and nobody can change it. Nobody can afford it. Nobody can move. Nobody, it doesn't matter what men say. It's a divine purpose that God had always intended. It's God's intention that his people would be conformed to the image of his son, Romans 8, 29. God does not love us just the way he are because we're under, we have a curse. Everything that we see is cursed. It's got to be done away with. So he's not leaving us just the way he are. He's not loving us just the way he are. He's changing us so that we can be with him yeah, in glory. But now the righteousness of God we are being made like him. Not at all an afterthought. With great wisdom and divine purpose, God had planned it all out before the foundation of the world, 1 Peter 1.20. And so man can't change this. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what. They can't change it. From the beginning, God's plan was to work through Jesus because man cannot remove sin. Yeah. No other way can man be clean without the faith of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Our righteousness is apart from the law. It is impossible for man to become righteous by the law. It's the law against the promises of God is... Is the law against the promises of God? Certainly not. Galatians 3.21. God continues with great wisdom to funnel our attention toward him because he is the main attraction. He is the only one that can help us. See, that's the way I looked at it when I was preparing for this. I was looking at this in Romans. He, he's showing us, he's bringing us to the point where we can't find any other help any other place but in him. God continues with great wisdom to funnel us to his for our attention to be on him. He is our focus. What he is doing in Christ is our hope and our joy. We will not find any hope and joy in any other place. 
Exodus 20, um, 5. God doesn't just deserve our attention and devotion, which he does deserve it. We have no right to give ourselves to the world. It says, Exodus 20, um, 25, 20, verse 5. I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. So for anybody to think for a second that, well, it's okay. God loves me. I can give myself to the world. I could just, I could turn my back on him. He's still, really? Well, let's, let's read what the scripture says here. We have no right to give ourselves to any other thing. Do not be confused. What we do with our time affects God. If this is speaking to you right now, and you have some things that are robbing your time with God, I just say get rid of them. You don't owe anybody anything. That makes it real easy. If you got something, why well, owe this person? No, you don't. You don't owe anybody. You owe God. He's the one who sent his son. He's, given, he's, he's the one that's given everything for you. He sent his son. He didn't even pull back his own son. He sent his son to die for you. You don't owe anybody anything but your attention to God. We were made for God to be with Him. It's God who wants, who ha, it's God who has, who makes us righteous. Even the it says in her in our text here, even the righteousness of God. The good news is not only that sins are taken away, but that we have the righteousness of God to. To fill that void. We are not left empty. For us to continue with God, our righteousness had to match His. If we are to dwell with God forever, we must be like Him. It must be made clear, whoever is not like God will not be received by God. This is not a hate speech. We live in a time where they said, Oh, that's, that's hateful for you to say that. No, it's hateful for you not to tell the truth. Yeah, amen. And for you to allow somebody to go all the way to glory and stand before God and be rejected by God because you didn't speak the truth. That's hateful. It's by the grace of God that we are transformed to be like him. All we don't, all we don't have... Excuse me. All we all we have There are groups of people that will say that we do not have to be transformed. But God says we do. God is the judge. We mentioned this this morning brother Gene brought this up that People will say, you can't judge me, but you know what? Well, we make judgment calls every day, but that's beside the point. But in the end, God will judge. And it is good for those who are really loving to help somebody to see that. Amen. All come short without Jesus. We would have no righteousness of God, and we would be rejected. If you're not sure, it means... That you must give yourself to the Lord more. God does not only deserve our attention. He wants it. Yeah. We do affect God's sin at any level is bad. The Lord's name is Je Jealous, Exodus 34, 14. It's not okay to give our affection to any other. Yeah. God is showing us that in our relationships with our families... Like I will use Nikki, for example. If she was giving her affection to somebody else, mm -hmm. not coming home to me, mm -hmm. I will tell you that will affect me. Yeah. Uh -huh. That will bother me immensely. Mm -hmm. Our God is like that. Yeah. If we're giving our affection someplace else mm -hmm. and we're not giving our affection to him, it bothers him. Yeah. That's why it says, the Lord's name is jealous, Exodus 34, 14. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to come home and be with my wife every day. 
Because that's God has given me affection for her. You know what? This is the way it should be with God. And if it's not, there's something wrong. Something has made a barrier there. And it's the world's flesh. The Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.24. The Lord is passionate about his people. Passionate enough to send his son to die. Who, how dare we not be as passionate about serving him? God is not lukewarm, and we cannot be lukewarm about God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, if you don't think you need something, or you're not aware of the remedy of your problem, you won't go after it. So what we're doing here with Romans is bringing us to the point of we see we, we are in need. We see that we can't do this on our own and we're in need. So the Spirit's bringing us to this point where we need Jesus. First, the Spirit shows us that we're helpless. We're all on our own, have no hope of being accepted by God. Then the Spirit doesn't leave us there. Then the Spirit shows us the remedy. You know, if you're sick, you want a remedy, right? You want to take care of the problem. Why? Because you realize there's something wrong. See, some people don't even know there's anything wrong. They're in such a bad state, they don't even realize they're in a bad state. See, the Spirit is helping us here. This is how good our God is. I'm telling you how good our God is. He's he's bringing us to a point where we need a remedy for our situation. So what do we do to be acceptable to God? Here we are in our text now. What does the Spirit say? But now the righteousness of God without the law manifested, being witnessed by the law and prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Here, this, here we don't need to make this complicated. Men, men, men try to make a power grab here. They say, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. No, no, but you got you to come with, to us. And we've got the books and we've, we're smarter than you. You got to come to us. No, well, okay, let's see what the Spirit says. By faith of Jesus Christ unto all, that that all means all, and upon all them that what? That come to a certain area with a name above it, that do certain things like some men tell them to do. No, this isn't about men. This is about God. Upon all them that believe, for there is no difference For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Not in a group, not in a people, Christ Jesus. We are made under Christ. This is his church. He is the head. We are the body. We are the church. So here we go. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith, in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So again, the whole thing is about God. Faith is not just something that you have on the shelf. It's a living, breathing thing that we have to continue in, that we live in. And it'll help you see these things clearly. So the question asked here is, what must we do to be saved? Men come up with all manner of answers. Some to be sure is to give themselves the power that God deserves. Flesh, that's what flesh does. It wants power over men. But see, this, isn't about, this is about what God's doing. So it, the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy whole house, Acts 16, 31. Believe. See, that will help a lot of troubles. Why do people get themselves in so much trouble? It's because of unbelief. It's because their faith somewhere has gotten weak because they've been giving themselves to things that don't help their faith be strong. We do not depend on ourselves or any other man to be saved. We depend on God. 
It's by faith in Jesus Christ, Galatians 2.16. This changes everything. We no longer need to be told what to do. I mean, I'm not, no, be careful here. I'm, talk, I'm talking about salvation. Now, we all help one another out. I understand that. Some of us don't see things clearly. We help each other out, and we're humble, and we, we help each other out. But what I'm talking about is salvation. For us to be saved, we need Jesus. By faith, we believe, and we can't get enough of Jesus. So my conclusion, brethren, is let nothing hold you back from being close to God. Thank you, brethren.